Hello, I'm Zach Taylor, Director of Western University Center for Urban Policy and Local Governance. Today I'm very pleased to announce a new report published by the Center called Administering a Ranked Choice Voting Election, Lessons from London, Ontario. The report, which was written by Charlotte Kurz, a graduate research associate with the Centre, takes a close look at the challenges faced by the City of London as it implemented this new electoral system in its 2018 general election. London was the first municipality in Ontario to adopt ranked choice voting after it was enabled by the Government of Ontario. And other Ontario municipalities are now deciding whether to adopt the new system in their 2022 municipal elections. Importantly, this report does not evaluate the effect of ranked choice voting on local democracy or the, the way that local elections play out. Instead, the focus is squarely on the challenges associated with conducting a municipal election using the new system. We hope this report will contribute to discussions happening across the province uh, by providing an accessible but detailed account of what happened in London. At this point, I'll hand it over to Charlotte, who will talk about uh, the findings in her report. In 2017, the City of London became the first Canadian municipality in decades to use an electoral system other than the first past the post system. It also became the first municipality in Ontario to use the ranked ballot system since this was enabled by 2016 changes to the Municipal Elections Act. The ranked ballot voting system is different from the first past the post system. It enables voters to rank multiple candidates and these votes are then counted in multiple rounds. In the first round, each first choice selection is counted. If a candidate receives a majority of the votes, then they are declared elected. And if not, then the candidate with the fewest votes is removed from the electoral competition. The votes of the electors who selected that candidate are then transferred to their second choice selection. The votes are counted again and this process continues until a candidate is declared elected. On May 1st, 2017, the City of London Municipal Council passed a bylaw which implemented ranked ballot voting. The next step in the process was to procure a vendor, which occurred in late 2017. A request for qualifications was held at first. This process was unsuccessful, so the next step was for the City of London to invite prior vendors who had worked with the City to demonstrate their hardware and software capabilities a contract was then negotiated. Extensive testing of the equipment and software was needed in the absence of provincial certification of the equipment and software for ranked ballot elections. An external auditor was hired for the initial evaluation of the equipment and software, as well as for the acceptance testing, for logic and accuracy testing, and to perform a final examination immediately prior to voting day. Changes to staffing were also an important part of this process. An elections team was created, which solely focused on implementing the ranked ballot election. The team was created from new staff and from staff seconded from other divisions. As well, awareness raising and community outreach were key components of implementing the ranked ballot election in London. This included making candidates aware through candidate information sessions, as well as educating the general public. The City of London had a successful voting process. Eight of 15 offices had unofficial results available on election night, and the remaining offices had their unofficial results available by 3 p.m. the day following voting day. The official results were made available on October 29, 2018. There are several key lessons to be gained from the City of London's experience with the ranked ballot voting. The first is that implementing ranked ballot voting can be expensive the first time it is done. In 2017, City of London staff estimated that the cost increase directly attributable to the addition of ranked ballot voting would be $322,500. The actual cost increase attributable to ranked ballot voting was $515,446, which is a significant increase. The major components of this cost increase from the previous election were the additional public awareness efforts, the contracting of the auditor services, as well as the procurement of equipment and software. Many of these costs are expected to decrease over time as city staff and the public become more experienced with the ranked ballot voting process. The external auditor cost is essential for the integrity of the election and the City of London does expect to contract an auditor again in 2022, although this audit should be less extensive. Another key lesson from the City of London experience is the changes to human resources which were made. This involves the creation of a central team of staff focused solely on the election 
and the City of London found this helpful in implementing a successful ranked ballot election. Another key lesson from the City of London is that procurement and testing of equipment and software were burdensome. There is currently no provincial certification offered for equipment and software in ranked ballot elections. The equipment had to be procured early in order to allow for ample testing and problem solving. The procurement costs were high, although they were lowered slightly due to the signing of a multi-election contract with the vendor, as well as the City of London's efforts to outsource some basic material costs to other vendors who offered them at a lower price. The testing and auditing costs overall are a significant component of the cost of implementing a ranked ballot election. Another key lesson is that awareness raising and outreach are essential. There are a few common misconceptions, one of which is that some residents may think that they need to select the maximum number of candidates on a ballot. This is untrue. Residents in London could select one, two, or three candidates. So it was essential to make the public aware that this is the case. It was also important for the City of London to set a public expectation that it will take longer than usual for the official results, as well as for some unofficial results, to be made available. The City of London managed the public awareness raising and outreach efforts by forming partnerships with community organizations, with community-oriented municipal departments, as well as with the media. They attended local events and festivals to hold mock elections, which would get the public used to voting in a ranked ballot election. And they also held candidate information sessions and used mailouts and pamphlets, which explained the workings of a ranked ballot election to residents. The final key lesson is that there is space for provincial support, which could reduce costs and administrative burdens on municipalities. One space for the province would be to certify equipment and software, or to give financial support to municipalities to hire audit services. Another space for the province to become involved would be in providing public education materials to aid in the public awareness and outreach efforts, or to provide transition grants to municipalities undergoing the ranked ballot election for the first time, which would help them to afford outreach and education efforts. Thank you, Charlotte. Now we will be joined by two guests who are at the center of the events described in the report. Kathy Saunders is uh, City Clerk of the City of London, and Sarah Corman is Director of Licensing and Elections. The Q&A will be moderated by Joe Lyons, the Director of Western's Local Government Program. Hello, I'm Joe Lyons, Director of Western's Local Government Program. I'm joined by Kathy Saunders and Sarah Corman from the City of London for a Q&A session on London's adoption of ranked choice voting for the 2018 municipal election. Kathy and Sarah were the two administrative leads behind, leads, excuse me, behind this initiative, Kathy in her role as clerk and Sarah as manager of licensing and elections. So thanks to both of you for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Okay, let's get right to it. So what was the biggest challenge you faced in administering a ranked ballot election? There were a number of challenges. It's hard to kind of pick one as the biggest, but uh, I would say one of the one of the main challenges we had was uh, dealing with uh, such tight timelines established by the province uh, to establish our procedures and have technology in place for the 2018 election. Yeah, building on that, the voting technology from um, a logistical perspective, the timelines were challenging in terms of procuring and testing the voting equipment for the 2018 election. We, we ran our first test in March of 2018 and we're still refining um, audible outputs in September. So we were fortunate that the legislation though had been amended to change nomination closing uh, to the end of July rather than September. This allowed for a lot more time to have the ballots ordered and marked for logic and accuracy testing, but it was still difficult to, uh, when we ran our first test in March of 2018, for sure. Great, thanks. And maybe just a quick follow-up on that. Um, you know, administering elections is obviously very high stakes. And as I'm sure you guys are both aware, clerks are known to be a cautious bunch. So can you tell us a little bit, maybe more about what it was like managing and implementing such a significant change in this type of environment? 
it'd be more of the, the sort of human dimension? It, it was pretty nerve wracking. I, I, I know Sarah and the, the rest of the team would concur on that. Um, to be the first in Canada to do it um, without uh, knowing whether the technology was in place that would help us be successful um, was very stressful. Um, but uh, at the same time, it's always nice to have a new challenge, I suppose. Um, but for sure, having such a short period of time and not having a lot of confidence at the beginning of the process and the technology was, was very, very stressful. Thanks. And so thinking about the 2022 election, uh, if London decides to use ranked ballots again, what would you do differently? Uh, we will be doing ranked ballots unless uh, the council changes the bylaw to do otherwise. Uh, one of the one of the things that we did in 2018 uh, was we decided to do a single uh, elimination, so a single candidate elimination rather than a batch elimination, um, which you know resulted in slower slower results. But at the same time, it was very transparent to the public. Um, how the votes were transferred uh, between each round, which I, I think is very important. So we will certainly consider doing uh, a batch elimination um, uh, if possible in 2022. Yeah, the technology set up to do the batch elimination, but uh, we also have talked about uh, working on our results reporting and making it more efficient. So we'd really like to, on election night uh, in 2018, we manually printed the results and then manually keyed them into tables on our website. And that took a lot of time and energy uh, with staff. So in previous elections, we'd always had an interface in between the raw outputs and uh, our external website. Currently, there is not a solution for this for ranked ballot elections, um, but we're really looking towards something that's just a bit more efficient and uh, gets things up in a timely manner. Election night, uh, there's a lot of people eager to see the, the final result of the election. Great. And finally, what are the most important things that you would recommend to other municipalities that are considering adopting ranked choice voting? Uh, from my perspective, I think the key thing is to get out into the community and educate, um, make use of the media. Uh, London's media, I can't say enough about uh, how, how helpful they were. Um, they bought in uh, to helping us get the, the word out, whether they agreed or disagreed with uh, ranked ballots. Um, so communicating with the uh, with the public getting out to a coffee shop or to a community group, uh, whatever you can, get out into the community to educate uh, the public about ring ballots. Yeah, and, and uh, from a technology perspective, I would I would recommend implementing the change slowly. If you're thinking of moving to a ranked ballot election, uh, we wouldn't recommend introducing too many changes at once, such as if you've never run an internet election, uh, maybe don't do both at the same time. Um, just focus on one initiative at a time. Uh, the resources for a ranked ballot election, especially on the testing and as Kathy mentioned, the community engagement, the, um, the resources are, are stretched pretty thin in both time and staffing for both of those initiatives. And um, Another one other thing is if municipalities are thinking of moving to a ranked ballot election to look at our website and look at the uh, detailed poll results. They're currently on our website and historically these poll by poll results. Um, they're very interesting to candidates, students doing research and a lot of our uh, citizens and the results for a ranked ballot election are quite different and we still get questions today on how to interpret them and uh, just basically describing what they mean. So just pay attention to something like that, the results for sure. The other thing I would mention is uh, if the first time doing a ranked ballot election, I would strongly recommend using an auditor to audit your processes. Um, uh, you know, that was money very well spent for us uh, having not done it before and having someone 
um, that is familiar and has audited numerous rank ballots, um, helping and monitoring what we're doing throughout the process uh, is key. And I would strongly recommend that to any clerk that's doing that in 2022. Yeah, especially uh, with the logic and accuracy and the marking test pattern and uh, just a predetermined result and running that through and just that confidence in uh, election night that you know that the results are going to come out as as planned. Great. And just maybe a quick follow up on this. Something that figured prominently in Charlotte's report was the creation of the special leadership team to help administer the election. Just wondered if you could tell us a little bit about that. Yes, uh, we were very lucky that the corporation as a whole um, had our backs. Um, a, a lot of the senior managers and the management staff, as, as well as our union staff across the corporation, was there to help. Um, and um, we relied on them heavily on advanced polls and on election day to assist. So, it, you know, the, the using corporate staff, um, is is helpful during election because they understand the corporation, they understand council, they understand the election. So it's it's helpful to have um, corporate staff uh, outside at the polls dealing with the public. Yeah, and although we you know we do use a paper ballot, there's uh, a lot of technology behind a paper ballot election in today's world so you know our advanced polls are using a live voters list and we have uh, uh, our IT staff are helping with that and our, our IT management definitely involved in making sure our, our processes are safe and secure and uh, you know, we can't say enough about um, the support we have making sure our advanced votes are are seamless and and uh, successful. Great. Well, thanks again, Kathy and Sarah, for sharing your experiences administering ranked choice voting in London, Ontario. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, Kathy, and Sarah. That was great. To obtain a copy of the report or to learn more about the Center for Urban Policy and Local Governance at Western, you can visit Nest dot uwo dot ca slash urban center. There you can learn about the center's activities and future events and obtain our other publications. Thanks for watching.